Hey guys, what's up? Programmer2290 here to talk to you about my game of the year for 2011. I made a top 10 list, which is not easy uh, to do, by the way, because 2011 was a great year for video games, especially in the latter half of the year. Anyways, I'm going to start off with games that didn't quite make the list, but almost made it. Um, Kingdom Hearts Recoded, I didn't think was going to be that great of a game, but it controlled a lot like Birth by Sleep and had a lot of variety in the game, but it probably would have made Game of the Year, but I didn't finish it because at that time other stuff started coming out like Pokemon and Portal and I just didn't have time to finish that game. Uh, Mario Kart almost made it because Mario Kart DS, I loved it, it was the best Mario Kart, I still think it is, but Mario Kart 3DS didn't uh, do the same thing that Mario Kart DS did. Um, it, it didn't have all the, I don't know, it didn't have a lot of the correct tracks I wanted from the older games. And it's still a fun game, don't get me wrong, it almost made it, but it's not there. L.A. Noir is another game that I can't put on this list, because even though I liked it, I didn't finish that either, because when that game came out, I was traveling to California at the time, and I didn't really get much time to play it. I do want to finish it eventually. Um, and the last one is Clash of Heroes. That game is probably my second favorite DLC game that came out this year, and it's a really good game uh, on the Xbox 360, but it, it's not a game that you can really like, replay over and over again, or so it's not really that, I mean, it's, it's a decent, it's like 20 or 30 hours, so it's a decent game, but that, that's another one that almost made it. And then games that you won't see on the list um, is Miss Splosion Man because I haven't bought it yet, because I, I want to beat Splosion Man before I get Miss Splosion Man. Um, Uncharted 3, and that's because I have never played Uncharted 1 and 2, and I don't want to play 3 until I play 1 and 2, so I bought 1 and 2 and I have them, I'm getting ready to play them uh, pretty soon. And Rayman. And Rayman, I, I like the look of it and everything, I think it's going to be a really good game, but I wanted to wait for that one. To, to buy on the 3DS because it's coming out uh, in February on the 3DS and I'd rather play the 3DS version. Um, so let's start off. Number 10, I have Pushmo, which a lot of you probably don't know what that is, but it's a really good puzzle game on the 3DS that you don't really need the 3D to play, but it enhances it. But it's like a, it's like it's sort, of, sort of like Catherine, but only it's like a lot more kitty looking. And it's on. It's a, it's a 3DS uh, game, but it, for a DLC game, it's a really good game. Then we got Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which I didn't like the fact that that game came out because I would have rather had the characters as DLC. But I was gonna put Marvel vs. Capcom on here, but that is just the better version of the game. So my number nine is Marvel is Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Number 8 is Star Fox, which is probably the 3DS game I spent the most time with this year. Uh, I looked at my 3DS and it t tells you how long you spent with each game. Um, Star Fox is the one this is the one 3DS game I spent the most time with. Uh, number 7 we have Zelda Ocarina of Time because I love Ocarina of Time. Um, for the last two years I play that game yearly and when it first came out, the first two years, I played that game over and over and over again. So a remake of Ocarina of Time is like just one of the best things that could happen to a, you know a Zelda maniac like me. Dead Island, and on its own, Dead Island isn't that great of a game. But if you have people to play it with, which I had two people and one person who I played it with a lot, it's a really really fun game. And I especially love the uh, weapon creation and everything in that game. And uh, uh, I can't wait for the DLC which should be coming out uh, here pretty soon, I think next month or something like that. So number six is Dead Island. Number five is Pokemon Black and White. Now, Pokemon would have been higher on the list, but this year's Pokemon, or last year's Pokemon, didn't do what Black and White, or didn't do what per Diamond and Pearl did. I spent 400 hours on Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, and I only spent like a little under, you know, 50 or something like that on black and white so uh, while I do love the Pokemon series and 50 hours on any game is a great amount of time I thoroughly look forward to the Pokemon 3DS game which I hopefully is gray but uh, and I want Pokemon Stadium 3 on either the Wii U or the 3DS that'd be awesome but that's you know that's where I put Pokemon number four is 
the last of the portable games that will be on here. Which, number four, I guess, would also be the best portable game on the year for me, is Super Mario 3D Land. There are problems with that game, though. Um, like, the jumping. Mario starts off, like, sort of walking, and then he runs, even if you're holding the... It's a 3D Mario game. In a 3D Mario game, I don't want to hold the run button. I don't think that should have been a thing in the game, but it was. They have the run button, and he doesn't start off running like he does in other games. He starts off slow, and sometimes you won't make a jump just because of that, so... It's a great game, um, but it is not the best Mario game. It's probably the best handheld Mario game, but it doesn't come close to Galaxy or Galaxy 2. Probably better than Sunshine, though. And uh, next up is number three, which is... Uh, I, I totally love this game. I bought it on a whim, sort of. I wasn't going to get it, but then I saw reviews for it on IGN and Game Trailers, and they reviewed it greatly, and I completely love this game. Catherine. Catherine is my number three because it's such a great game. It's like, it's got so much story and development for each of the characters, and at the same time, it's an awesome and really challenging puzzle game. The next on the list is another puzzle game that I think deserves the number two slot, which is Portal 2. It is not the longest game ever, but... It is challenging, and hilarious, and uh, probably the best co-op experience I had this year. Those puzzles, figuring them out, and just fucking around with your friends online is so much fun. And my number one game of the year for 2011 is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Um, there's a lot of reasons, a lot of people who didn't like this game, but a lot of people did, did like the game too. Like, uh, when it first uh, got reviewed, before it even came out, it was like, perfect tens across the board, and then you get like sevens and stuff like that. Um, a lot of the reasons people didn't like this game was actually some of the re a lot of the reasons I did like this game. The only problem I had with this game besides one mini game that involved the harp was um, near the end of the game there's this quest you have to go on to uh, get an item. I'll just say, I don't want to spoil anything, get an item. and. Three of the dragon, you have to go to these three dragons who give you, you, you know, a piece of the item. And two of the uh, dragons give, give you it after you do something, you know, it, it makes sense. But the third one has you go on a hunt for, like, these random tadpole things to, like, prove that you deserve it, something like that. That was, that was the stupidest part, and it, it didn't make any sense to the story at all. But that's the only problem I have with the game. Other than that, it... The, expanded the Zelda lore, it explained like plot holes and all, well not like plot holes, but explained the Zelda, um, you know, explains some, you know, in a way it explains future other games and it, it was just a great Zelda experience. Learning about, you know, the story and everything, you just like, your jaw dropped sometimes. So that's, those are my games of the year for 2011. Um, I'll be uploading a video before the end of the month about my most anticipated games of 2012. And before I go, I just want to give two more things. There were two games I played this year that didn't come out this year that were really good, and I want to give them some honorable mentions. First is Valkyrie Chronicles, or Valkyria Chronicles. I probably spent a whole month on that, and um, that is a great game. I'm still not done with it. I'll, I'll come back to it later on in this year and finish up the rest of the, not achievements, but in-game trophies that are specific to that game. And then Red Dead Redemption is probably I spent equal amount of time with that with, you know, by myself or with friends. This is a great experience, Red Dead Redemption. And I still only have two more achievements I want to get with that one. But anyways, uh, see you guys next time. Pro Gamer, 